Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark with Mac Tech Keyboards, and today is another transmission from Keyboard World. Now, I was going to do my first installment of what I hope to be a series um, where I just do a live stream anywhere from an hour or more, depending on time or less, where I basically take questions, perhaps do mods on screen and answer any questions uh, about particular keyboards that I may own. I do have a somewhat sizable collection of budget keyboards, so there's a good chance that I'll be able to actually, you know, oh, does this keyboard do X, Y, and Z? And be able to pull it out and, you know, do a comparison, maybe put a switch in there and see how it sounds. Um, and I'm going to see if that works. So, but I was going to start this weekend, but it being a holiday weekend in the U.S. And, I mean, I know we've got people from all over the world watching, but I, I just figured I'll work on putting together things I'm going to cover, you know, to kind of fill in the time between questions um, and see if it actually works. I don't know. Maybe it won't be that popular. Maybe it will be popular. I don't know. I know that on our Discord and the subreddit, our budget cubes if you haven't been there please go take a look um we've got a lot of questions specifically especially um can you recommend a keyboard for me which is a very arbitrary type of uh question since it's going to be different you know it's subjective to everyone so there's a lot of information that really needs to be gathered and sometimes people don't even know what questions they need to ask themselves before you know picking a keyboard so budget keeps i apologize i'm still just getting over being sick so excuse the uh hey at least you can't catch a virus over youtube or can you anyway today i wanted to you know like i said since i'm not doing that this week i'm gonna i'm gonna try it next weekend and see how that goes hopefully that'll go well if i can help people out um answer questions there's no such thing as a stupid question there's a lot of people that are starting out in this hobby they see the keyboards they like the sounds and they want to be a part of it but they don't understand everything and even for somebody that say has been in it even for a month that person's going to have a wealth more knowledge you know over somebody who is just starting to get interested in it and what I hate to see personally is other people, you know, perhaps not being as kind or friendly to newcomers when I can remember them being newcomers asking, you know, different but still as, you know, uh, questions that should be known. But they were asking them and we answered them. How can you turn around, you know, a month later and treat someone like that? So we, we tried to... We do our best to keep that out of budget keeps. And while our name, you know, implies budget keyboards, we do have many members that have much pricier boards and they'll share them as well. And budget is also one of those very subjective terms. A budget to, to you know, a college student might be $75 all in with keycaps. And that can be achieved. Now you're gonna, you know, cut some corners, but you can get a decent keyboard for that price. That a budget for someone else might actually be 300. So, budget more means that you know you stick within you know the price range that you're working with. But another reason that we started it was to create a safe space. Um, unfortunately, too many hobbies have the unfortunate <clears throat> habit of becoming clicky and almost you know requiring that you spend a certain amount of money before you're considered a hobbyist or an enthusiast. And I've never considered that to be um, fair in any way, shape, or form. So, I went off on a long tangent. I apologize about that. Uh, you guys can go ahead and skip. Now, today, we're taking a look. I'm going to go ahead and finally... This has been sitting in a box since uh, late February, March, I want to say. Um, this box has traveled a lot. It's gone to China and back twice. Um, it's a long story. 
Yeah. I love Akko products. Hands down, their switches are some of the best. Uh, their keyboards here and there. I don't know if, uh, please don't jump on the 5075 bandwagon just yet. They made a whole bunch of kits. They won't say how many that have severe issues. They say they're correcting them. But I, I know it's it's a really nice looking plastic GMMK clone, even with the side light, with the knob. Uh, very nice for, I think, $109, $110, you know, switches and caps. So a much better price point. But I've heard of nothing but issues and that they released a lot of these. Like the ones that are on Epo Maker site are for sure the damaged ones as well as some of the other sites. So I can't speak much as to Akko keyboards. This one, this is customer service. It's a whole different thing. I'm not going to get into it. Uh, those of you that have been on the sub have probably heard about me talking about it. So I'm not going to knock Akko as a company for their products. I think their products, for the most part, are good, especially their switches and, and their keycaps, which I don't know if they're going to be doing the collector's case anymore. In case you didn't know, the key the keycaps that come in the nice metal box, and I'm looking to see if I have one right here. Oh, yep. uh, I didn't. I've been buying these for over a year, and I didn't know that they were called collector's box until Akko actually... Uh, commented on one of my videos and they said well they don't come in collector's box i'm like i had never even known that that's what these were called collector's box so i think Akko is phasing these out unfortunately this is a a cheap type of i'd say composite metal aluminum perhaps um aluminum composite but it's got magnets on it and it's got a space for every single key and now Akko's keycaps are coming in plastic plastic boxes or uh, cardboard boxes of plastic trays i'm sorry but i honestly i'll pay 10 15 dollars more for a set i know that doesn't cost that much to make but i will pay 10 15 bucks more for a set that includes those um that those cases why because it just makes it much easier for me to organize and to put away and take back so anyway i'm not going to get into that story here this is an Akko Mod 007 V1. This was supposed to be a V2, but that's another story. So because I'm stuck with this one and it's been sitting in the box and I've been wanting, I was waiting because they were, they, they made the promise they were gonna send me a, 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 the corrected one. I helped actually make some of the corrections for the, 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 the V2, but anyway. Like I said, I'm, I, I'm trying to avoid not talking about it. So anyway, this is this is the V1. Uh, you can tell the differences because apparently the V2 d doesn't... Uh, it comes with a PC plate, not an FR plate as extra. And it actually already comes disassembled. So, um, and there's some videos out there if you want to take a look. So I'm going to be installing uh, the FR4 plate today. I, I prefer uh, composite materials over metal. Uh, we've got your, uh, oh, this is actually a decent, um, it's got your uh, plastic protective over the metal parts, but it's a decent uh, rubber cable with the coil. Uh, th these are actually my favorite without the aviator connector. Aviator connector's not neat. I know, it's aesthetic, whatever. But the coil gives me the retro vibe. So I do like these, especially, you know, it's right there near where you're going to plug it into the keyboard. All right, so... Uh, and then we've got the Akko mode 007. Here's 75%. I mean, this one came out, you know, a little after the uh, GMMK. I mean, obviously, the SAT 75 came out, Satisfaction 75. GMMK copied it, GMMK Pro. Then, I mean, since then, we have seen dozens, perhaps, of, uh, you know, keyboards uh, copying it. Now, this is a very substantial kit let me see i don't believe there's you got your manual that's it uh don't even have uh i think this is yep that's gonna be hex so and we don't even have tools it it they apparently got feedback on this uh 
pretty poor packaging job. That's why the V2 came out, I mean, within a few months of the first release. But anyway, so it is a gasket mounted 75% with a knob that I'm not sure it should come off. <coughs> Probably going to have to. Oh, the plate might actually go around it. Well, we'll have to see. But it's going to need the force brake mod and we're going to put in this FR4 plate and see what it sounds like stock. Let's go for it. All right. All right. Now the board is already just come on done on its own. I know I'm going to have a cable. Thankfully, there's some room. These screws are just stuck in there. They just don't want to come out. I find that kind of odd. Usually, the screwdriver works just fine with the magnets. All right, so let's disconnect the daughter board. Ah! Let me go ahead and get this out of the way. Yeah, sorry about that. This is one of those daughter board connectors that should be easy, but it really isn't, and it's kind of flimsy. All right, I don't want to break it. <clears throat> so, since these screws, I'm going to guess, are going to fall on anyway, yeah. Make sure we collect all six of them. Yep, one, two, three, four... Five, six. All right. Well, so the reason I think it popped up that quick, that easily, was because of the gaskets. So there's a tiny little daughter board. Now it did have this. Uh, I forgot what this foam is called. This it's really open cell foam. Uh, we're going to be replacing it. I honestly, that's kind of disappointing um, for this keyboard, to be quite honest. Now it does have. Wow, it's got some damage on the inside, that's for sure. So, there's a pot marks. Ooh, yeah, it's um, it's pretty rough on the inside, honestly. The CNC job. Now it's got holes, and it looks like there's corrosion going on already in there. Sorry. I don't know if you guys can get, it's going to be hard to see in there, but there's actually, I can see corrosion, what looks like corrosion anyway. Um, let me see if I can, this help. Oh, I guess not. Uh, Maybe a little bit, you can see. There's actually some, it's, only way that I can describe it is as, as, as corrosion. Looks like there's already corrosion down in there and I find that kind of odd. So why those extra holes and why is it showing signs of some sort of either deterioration or corrosion? That's, um, it's very disheartening. And also, you can see uh, the screw holes, they're like, they're half channel? I mean, well, that's kind of odd. I mean, it's just a, they only, they only have threads on a half of it, and there's nothing on the other side. I mean, this is an enclosed, as you can see the bump that goes over, but these are just half channel. You can see the threads, they're just open, open thread. All right. I'm wondering how many, um, uh, I mean, the issues that I had encountered were software issues, but obviously they had some hardware issues going on here as well. This is ridiculous. Um, well, this should be fun. Anyway, so here we've got this one. Now, these extra gaskets, I, I guess they're about that width. Um, so you've got them on both the front and the back. Um, I don't... 
Well, there's uh, some flux left behind for the, uh, the pen potentiate. Uh, yeah, I don't... Can that knob come off? I don't know. I'm not going to mess with it, especially off of the... Uh, out of the case. Uh, so, yeah, it comes stock with the aluminum. The newer version comes with a palm or PC plate uh, as well as the aluminum. And, I, and like I said, I believe from, from what I've read, it comes um, already uh, disassembled. Now, I'm, I'm looking... The reason I paused for a second, I wanted to see it kind of looks like it has uh, the capability for um, screw and stabilizers. Now, I don't want to go that far, but there is a lot of flux and spots that there shouldn't be. Um, it's... Huh. And it actually looks like it was adopted from another board because that right there is for a USB-C port to be um, soldered into. Um, but obviously we're using uh, the daughter board connector over here. Uh, so, interesting. So this is probably, this board is probably used on another one because I, I do recall them saying that, well, if it affects that board, then it's going to affect, and they named off some other. So, I think this one is the same board as another one, of, as some other 84%, but obviously this one's replaced with a... A key switch instead of a potentiometer. All right, so let's go ahead and take this plate off. I'm make a little pocket over here. What we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws. All right. So, with the board comes the knob, and here we are. Wow, that is, you can, um, because I'm holding it, you can feel how it, it wobbles. That is going to come off. I'm going to take a look at it once it's back installed. So, revision point two, height 1.6 millimeters, and this is manufactured, huh? I got this, I want to say, late November, early December, so I got this shortly after it was uh, made, but like I said, I encountered issues right off the bat um, for me on Linux. Basically, if I rebooted the computer while this was plugged in, the entire keyboard just died. It wouldn't work. I had to go through a whole reset process each time. So that became a big pain in the ass, mind you. Wow, yeah, see, that's where that USB-C port would go, right? Wow. But this says Mon007 AK75. I can't recall. Does the Yako have an AK75? Don't know. And then here is our, uh, our Poron. Foam, which goes like this. Now, I mean, these obviously are meant for plate stabilizers, and I just don't see, um, I mean, I don't see PCB stabilizers fitting through that, but we're not going to mess with that now. I am going to put these here. Now, these studs don't come off, and these don't have any studs, and there's no, I, I was pretty sure there should have been more things in here but I guess we're just gonna go ahead and use the um, the foam kind of as the standoff so since they didn't bother to include the studs or any extra hardware in here I mean obviously there should be studs there's screw holes there because um, I mean what's the point I can't even I can't screw this into nothing and these studs are a part of this so thanks uh, anyway, 
So let's go ahead and transfer over these uh, blade mounted stabs. I'm going to leave them as is. They are uh, tuned. And, but they are. I don't know. I mean, most should know this, but there's a little tab right here on plate mounted stabs. Always make sure that they're in place. That's basically the lock. That's a little snap piece that just makes sure that it's going over the, um, the plate and it's locked it in place. That's going to prevent it from popping out if you take off the keycap. And you know, it's got some tight tolerances around the stems and it'll pop right off there with you. So, obviously there's no need to try to reuse these gaskets because I doubt the stickiness is gonna remain. So I'm gonna go ahead and install new gaskets. And I did say I'm not gonna do too many mods, but I, I, I think I am. I'm gonna go ahead and just do a tape mod of the PCB. Um, and, uh, I think I'm gonna add some PE foam. I'm also gonna do some polyfill instead of this stuff. I've yet to try polyfill. I just got my bag of polyfill and I'm trying, I mean, again, I'll say this many times, I'm not a materials expert, but I've been reading up, especially keyboard. I mean, he, he does break out the science there and I would like to get a little bit more, but I mean, I don't do this for a living, so I don't have as much time to put into this as I'd like but that may change. Anyway, um, so I wanna see, because I don't think there's a hollowness, there's a ping here. So if I can get rid of the ping while not muting the uh, tones uh, from the keyboard, I might actually get a new tone because I've always been kind of partial to plastic over metal cases because of that that pinginess and that hollowness, but, but we'll see. So Gaskets are in. We got three and a half spare ones. <laughs> All right, so I did want. So just a test. Looks like that should work just fine. And then we put this on top of here. And we should be good to go. That should close up nicely. But before we go to close this up, let's go ahead and the beautiful thing is we don't have to worry about any of these holes. All we gotta worry about is uh, the port for the daughter board. So let's go ahead and throw this away. And don't stick with the blue theme. I've got different colored uh, um, crafting and Painter, painter's tape. It's basically just cray paper with a very light adhesive that does not leave residue. And most times, there are. don't get me wrong, there have been times like in very humid environments when I've used painter's tape and it's left some adhesive, um, hot and humid. But when it comes to keyboards, even with the RGBs, I don't think it gets hot enough for it to actually cause an issue. So let's go ahead and start here Looks nice, huh? All right. Now we lay 
of this down. Make sure it's nice and lined up as best as possible. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then we've got this. All right. Now we have this. And all of this has to stay in place without any screws. <laughs> so yes, this is going to be a bit interesting. Since I don't have any studs, am I going to be able to do this? I'm, I'm fairly certain I should be able to. But let me go ahead and get the polyfill. I did not get that. Uh, it's called Many Names. The one I found, I mean, I just, it's, uh, it's filling for stuffed animals, really. Um, it's fake down. Um, down like the feathers it has a spot to cut right there it's definitely um, as you can tell it's been air packed so it's probably gonna blow up as soon as some air starts coming into it because this should be pretty loose stuff yeah All right. well it's not blowing up as quickly as I thought uh, I don't really want to open this all the way and have polyfill everywhere but it looks like I have to probably stick it in a Ziploc baggy once I get it all opened up. Yeah, all right. So it feels, wow, it does feel like um, fur almost. So, uh, and we have the back of the PCB taped, so we don't have any real concern of, I mean, I doubt this is going to be conductive, but this is what I've seen done before when it comes to these plastic board, I mean, these, uh, sorry, metal aluminum cases, uh, you know, just sparses a little bit. Now, from the videos I've seen, this makes a difference. That's why I'm trying it out. This bag was, I think, 4 or $5. So, I mean, if it doesn't do the trick, not like I lost out too much. And I've got plenty of stuff to put in here from EVA foam to car dampening mats to whatever. But car dampening mats already have that metallic. I actually find that I end up having to actually put either some silicone or another type of uh, soft EVA on top of it because of the metallic ping that it might actually introduce in, introduce in plastic cases. Not always, but I have seen it done that. Oh, and there is one more mod. I almost forgot now that I'm doing this. Glad that I actually remember. So that actually fits, but we're going to take it and set it aside for the minute. For a minute. I'm going to do what's called the force break mod. Now, I have a few boards, including the GMMK Pro, which I've yet to do this on. I did other things prior to finding out about the Force Break mod. And basically, this entails... How many screws do we have? We have a total of three at the top, three at the bottom. So... Basically, the force break mod, I'm trying to see how it's going to work on here. It's putting a piece of tape right next to where the screw holes are for the case. Um, and I've always seen a thicker type tape used. Now, this is a uh, Lenco. This is a medical type tape, so it's a little bit thicker. So I'm going to see about cutting just a few pieces and putting it right near the screw holes that's supposed to basically create a barrier so you're not getting the metal on metal sound anytime you strike on a key so let's see first if we can cut some of this off and where we're going to place them at because there doesn't seem to be some spots doesn't seem to be as clear now i've seen some people do it on both the top and the bottom and some say that it only needs to be done on one side. So I'm curious to see. I think we actually will have more room. I mean, look at... Just look at the... Uh, this is... Come on, Akko. That is seriously pure... Poor, very poor QA QC. I have never opened this, this board. And this is what it looks like on the inside. Um, that's just, uh, that's <sighs> very disappointing. Uh, that's all I can really say. It's just disappointing that, that Akko would, uh, you know, put this out there. It really is. So I think I'm going to, 
based on what I'm seeing, I think I'm going to have more room being able to put these force break mod uh, pieces of tape on. Well, I know I put them right there. On the bottom, I have a very small spot because I have to be underneath the... Now, see, that's the thing. It's supposed to be next to the screw hole. Those are the screw holes. I don't know what the heck those posts are for. Or are those... I'm gonna try in the bottom actually. I don't know if it'll work, but this is my first time doing the force break mod, so I may screw it up. Uh, if I do something wrong, please let me know. That's why I uh, never block comments. I appreciate comments, positive or negative. I mean, I mean, obviously, don't just attack me, just you know, and run away. If you have valid criticism, please share. I mean, if there's something I can do better. I would like to know. truth we are gonna have to take all this off oh first first things first this goes back in I know, it looks like a little, I mean, it's literally probably less than a gram if I weighed it. I don't think it would even make the, uh, the, uh, digital scale move, but I ain't trying to get into, I don't know about that cranny. That looks where the gaskets go, so I'm not going to mess with that. I want there to be, not that this would prevent any movement, but better than this well I hope it's better than this like I said I saw videos that convinced me to try it I never just say okay well I saw it on video so it must work because I mean I've even heard of you know people adjusting on sound test I mean I adjust on adjust sound on sound test to bring up the volume uh, but people actually like will tune the bass up like come on if, if why are you gonna fake a sound test that's kind of I don't know that just seems silly to me if it sounds like crap well it sounds like crap I've done sound tests that sound like crap this is just this is what it sounds like I tried to do my best to replicate you know a, a good rep, do a good reproduction of the sound I mean obviously it can always be a little different but all right so because this See, that's the whole thing. This is supposed to be attached to the plate, because otherwise it's just kind of setting in there. I mean, it's not even attached. I mean, the switches would keep... Well, let's do that. It's kind of... We're going to use switches as anchors here, folks, because we don't have any studs. I didn't realize that. I mean, I, when I, I opened it up and realized that it wasn't a mod to... And I, I just put it right back in the box. And actually, I mean, it has been sitting in the actual... I threw it out there. The actual box that traveled back and forth. Because they used the same, even external box, um, to ship back and forth. So, um, just ridiculous, if you ask me. But So, I mean, they... Because I believe there was a bag 
of uh, tools and extra doohickeys when I first received it. But like I said, it didn't work. So I sent it back. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do some anchors. I'm using, um, for this, these are the uh, NK Black Silk. Um, they come slightly factory lubricated. They're, they're decent. Um, basically, they're, they're like a lube Gaineron Black with a little bit deeper of a sound. And I kind of like them. But right now, oh, come on. And we need the plate in here first, buddy. Because that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to, instead of using, because we don't have, we don't have the luxury of studs. So we're going to have to use switches as an anchor to keep everything in place while we assemble this keyboard back together. Alright. I'm going to try to do the corners, the space bar, and maybe a couple in the middle so that we can make sure that these um, switches have a good grip and they're holding everything in place. Like I said, since we don't have studs, we need to make sure that everything is lined up. So. Got that in there. Let's do this one more time. I feel like I've arranged this in here a dozen times already. I know it's not been that many, I'm just saying it feels like. My filling the board sound effects. <laughs> uh, polyfill it should be more like. And this stuff gets everywhere. It's like my cat hair. My cat's hair. It gets everywhere. All right. So now we've got the cable plugged in as we supposed to. We were too concerned with uh, doing anchors before. All right, stick everything in. All of the gaskets are in their correct spots. All right, this fits into place as it should. Yeah, I can already tell that force brake mod's working because that, that, that ping is gone. All right, good. So now... <laughs> All right. Now I do seem to have a little bit of polyfill coming off the edges, but that's easy to clean off. All right, so... How about we go ahead and load up some more switches and some caps and see what this puppy sounds like now.
Well, there we are. Loaded up with some blacks and an FR4 plate. Now, let's pick. All right, I wanted set. to use a keycap set that I don't already have loaded because I have a few keycap sets I'd like to put on this, but I already have loaded on another board. Um, and I have some more incoming keycap sets. So, a lot of folks might actually consider this boring, but whatever. I'll, I will be changing the keycaps out at some point, but just for the stock experience, brand new key keycaps, milk and honey. I have two sets of milk and honey. This is XDA, I believe. DSA or XDA? Uh, I believe this is XDA. Yes, I just did knock something over and I don't know what that could have been. But I guarantee you I will need it at some point. Anyway. is the mod 007 so gonna, no hollowness let's do a proper sound test and see what it sounds like be back in a minute with that sound test and I just want to thank everyone for watching I appreciate the views I appreciate the feedback um, I enjoy this hobby a lot and being able to share this with folks and anytime I hear that I've actually helped somebody I can't tell you I mean it's it's better than any drug I really do appreciate all of you guys and I just want everyone out there to know it so um, we'll be back shortly with the sound test of this Akko Mod 007. 